Hey there guys, I thought I'd just do this reply and um, then do another video after it because I've got something that I've been on my mind and I want to share with you guys. But this is just a response from one. For now. Alright, so time to spare, huh? <laughs> I don't actually have that much time to spare, it's just I take time out to spend time on my thoughts because just like uh, a muscle and the diet and all that kind of things it takes time to look after yourself so I think it's important to actually put some effort and time into it I'm actually very surprised that a lot of people don't actually take this time out and spend time on their emotions and thoughts like <laughs> I'm not so mindful because I was born that way I've actually spent time and effort on this all the time every day actually so I do spend a lot of time on myself and my own thoughts which is why I come to a lot of interesting conclusions there's a lot of things I've actually come out with and uh, then my mom's like you realize you're talking about this and uh, looks up a subject in psychology for me and goes see <laughs> Uh, so I've obviously um, can think pretty well and got a good way of looking at things because I'm coming up with ideas that uh, people have already done and put heaps of research into and I've never heard of before. Alright, so the other thing you asked me about was Buddhism and uh, my philosophies and uh, psychology and that and philosophies. Uh, I have to admit that one of the things that does really interest me is that Buddhism has a lot of things to do with the ego. Uh, a lot of the psychology behind Buddhism is actually dealing with traits within the ego. And um, uh, to be clear, when I'm talking about the ego, I'm talking about the. Uh, when I'm saying it like that, I'm referring to the encompassedness of most of the mind basically the traits that you get from ego and being egotistic uh, I guess I have to admit it comes from a lot of different angles ego is really quite a fluid idea <laughs> I don't know how to make it more solid for the way I talk it seems to be a um, conceptual idea so whatever I'm talking about usually is in reference to the actual side of ego I'm talking about. I know it's a bit, <laughs> bit complex, but the English language is yet to actually personify it so that we can pinpoint the actual conversation by just the word I'm using. It's usually the context of my conversation that's explaining what I'm talking about in the ego. All right, um, so I'm really interested in the ego and how it affects people and why people act certain ways. I find people uh, fascinating. And also a little frustrating at times. It's, it's really painful for me at times to watch my friends go through something and fight with their ego about it. When I know exactly what the answer is and why they're not doing it, but I can't say anything because it's up to them to find this. It's it's their journey, their lesson to find out. And you really can't act on this because the people then just think you're meddling with their lives and they react badly to it and um, usually become very difficult for you. So they won't listen. People don't listen. <laughs> People think they do, but they really don't. You only listen when there's something in it for you or some kind of interest. <clears throat> Which is something I've been trying to stop in myself, actually. I want to listen to everyone and everything without being biased in any form. Uh, basically, it's my way of being open to uh, anything that comes my way. Uh, I'm an opportunist. I love opportunities. I mostly make my own opportunities, and this is probably why I'm successful in life, but uh, I keep an eye out for opportunities that come along, because you never know where they'll come from. Alright, so, 
other thing you're asking me about was my brother and how he took the easy way out, so to speak. Well, frankly, I don't think he took the easy way out at all. I think he took the difficult way out. He just thought it was easy. He um, went along with my dad's ideas of him becoming a builder. And <clears throat> where this is not wrong, I definitely don't think it was the easy way out. It's the most difficult thing because it is going against your own thoughts and desires and passions. And I see that as self-conflict, which is something that we should always resolve in ourselves. Uh, even though it seems to be the easy way, because then all you do is, it's it's actually a um, oh, sadistic, no, malicious, oh, what's the term for self-harm? Ah, can't remember. You know what I'm talking about though, yeah, being self-malicious I guess I'll use for now because you're actually going well that's okay my feelings can take it I'm, I'm not good enough yet yeah, people say that even though they're not aware of it they say it in their subconscious they go I'm not good enough so I better do what I'm told fuck that <laughs> ah fuck that ah, that's just not me <laughs> but I feel this is what he's done but it's okay because it's not wrong or right, it's just the choice he made. Now, this is more difficult for others to accept to me doing, is my own thing that is. But it's easier for me to do than it is to become something else. I can't become something else. My sensitivity to myself won't let me. I actually get about six months through something that I'm doing that's not me and then uh, I will actually react I'll have absolutely zero motivation to actually do any effort into whatever it is no matter how much pressure is applied from the outside world and actually it works in reverse if there is pressure I actually buckle quicker and my brother knows this and this is why uh, working for him it works for me because when these situations happen he gives me space and he lets me have my downtime and he works around it and then when I'm back on my feet and I'm just working for him to keep myself afloat uh, it works out quite nicely so it's really good that he's a builder <laughs> it actually works out for me alright uh, and Lil, uh, you made a very interesting comment uh, that you said your life wasn't interesting at all well I don't think things are registered like that. I, I don't agree with it. I think everything has its interest as long as you're aware of paying attention to it. I think it's great that you decided to structure your videos around a, a couple of subjects and uh, using notes to help you. Like I'm using notes right now. <laughs> Actually this, this book is getting quite full. I've got so many notes in it. I, I've got a subject on a diagram that is a uh, why we love the actual connections between the id ego and super ego and why they work so simultaneously together for um a person who is in love with someone and see there's my second diagram <laughs> it just carries on i mean look at the crap i have got in this book i like to write anyway so i think you got to be aware of um, self-destructive thoughts and uh, be aware of positive ones as well don't think too much on them because when you start thinking too much positive thoughts shy away but for negative thoughts they become more potent it's it's quite strange that uh, the negative thoughts become more potent when you think about them I think it's because it's a fight-or-flight response <clears throat> If, if you're put into a situation where you need to think something out, your body reacts to the... It brings anxiety and stress in going, this needs to be solved now. And that puts stress on your body, mind, and emotions. And that's my sus, sus, um, guess, my educated guess. And that's my suspicion on the fact that... But um, it really pays off to 
to learn to be able to completely stop that emotion and that thought going in your mind because the more you say it to yourself the worse it gets uh, I know this because when my best friend uh, shot himself it was I realised that there was a pattern like I didn't believe it when it first happened I was in shock and I, I remember telling his mum no he wouldn't have done that because he would have told me he would have come to me and spoke to me but when I thought about it I actually saw a big pattern on how he treated himself and the words he said to himself it was nothing as bad as uh, I want to kill myself it was it was all these little put downs he used to put on himself and all this pressure and he used to feel that his own value was based on the attention that he got from his family and his father which is not at all the value of you is the fact that you exist if you look up astrology and uh, actually look into the uh, amount of planets and stars and things that are in the galaxy and how small we are in it and how rare it is for us to actually exist our existence is uh, a value because we actually exist it's amazing we exist in one way it's it's bound to happen because the percentage is there but in another way we are such a tiny percent of the actual existence within the entire cosmos that it's like whoa how the fuck this happened anyway and that's whenever I want to feel like I have actually am a valued uh, factor in life I think about that because the truth is it's amazing that this little planet in the middle of nowhere amongst millions and millions and millions and millions of um, star systems and stars that in most star systems stars are colliding causing massive cosmotic uh, explosions and destruction and yet we're in this little safe galaxy that manages to survive because it's stable enough and not as violent because it still is violent the sun's pumping out quite a lot of energy uh, yeah, so I, I think that um, I guess I've been thinking about my own philosophy I've been working on lately which is basically that existence and the planet is the only truths that are actually constant uh, I find that uh, human truths, the, people, the things that we teach each other are uh, only a fraction of reality in the smallest fraction of that not to mention society gets a lot of things wrong like they've told me a lot of things and I'm just like no I don't think so <laughs> it doesn't work quite like that I prefer to base my realities of uh, my truths of reality on the actual uh, experiences I get from the planet and from um, science and actual things that happen not something that the humans another person taught me because the thing about being human is we're flawed uh, that's the whole thing about human that's the amazing thing that makes us our flaws actually create um, creativity and humor and laughter and love and compassion it's all these amazing things where the planet is just it it just exists the way it is it's not scared of us it doesn't love us it's just there and I like to base my realities on my value of self on that because that is a constant. Anyway, I've been talking about that for a fair bit. I'm using up my time. Um, but I would love to get a, a talk again about any of that stuff if you want to send me a vid with some more questions my way. And I'll speak to you soon. Alright, bye.